everyone, I'm Karina. Thank you for joining me today. I will be guiding today's yoga session. Today we'll be focusing on chest opening stretches. Reason being we tend to have our head jutted forward and our spine slouching when we're on computers, at home, working at a desk, or even being on our phone, we tend to look down all the time. So we'll be looking at stretches that will activate and strengthen our serratus anterior, our lateral deltoid and our anterior deltoids, which is our shoulder motion and also activating any motion where we raise our arms up. A lot of the times when our neck hurts, we think that the neck is the problem, but actually it's because we're overcompensating with muscles in our body that is straining our neck, which is if I show an example, ideally we would like our core to be activated, our shoulders to be back so that we have a straight back. However, the reality is we are actually slouching a lot and our neck is often like this because we're always on our phones. So even if you're not on your phone, the normal thing now is for your neck to be forward. So be more conscious, we need to gradually correct moving our neck back because actually we should be upright like this. However, this has become the normal, which is why we we'll often have neck and shoulder aches. So we'll keep it simple in our yoga stretches today that can be done from home. And again, while you're seated, on a mat watching TV or even when you're sitting in bed or seated in general. And I'd like you to also use resistant bands in this episode or a long towel that you can twist or a long piece of cloth or a long t-shirt. And it needs to be wide enough so that when you are holding on to it, it is a little further than shoulder width apart. If you have resistant bands that are very short, it's going to be a bit tough. So something that is this width. All right, let's start with breathing and grounding ourselves in today's stretch. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth for three rounds. Deep inhale. And exhale. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Roll your shoulders back. One more round. Inhale through the nose. And exhale deeply through the mouth. Great. From here, we're going to start off in Virasana, warrior seated position. And this is where our heels are underneath our glutes, underneath our sit bones. If at any time this position is uncomfortable for you or on your knees, then you can also return back to easy seated position. If you can manage, Varasana seated position, please go ahead, roll your shoulders back, tuck in your tailbone so that your back is not curved or arched. Please use your resistance band, your cloth or a towel or a long piece of shirt fabric. Holding the band in front of you, see that it is a little wider than your shoulder width distance. So as mentioned, with our serratus anterior, we're going to activate when we use these resistance bands and also strengthen our shoulders and open our chest. So starting with the band in front of you, when we do this exercise, please don't be tempted to arch your back. Tuck in your tailbone so that you can keep a straight back in this. Micro bend your shoulders, sorry, micro bend your elbows. That would be weird if your shoulders were down here. And from here, lift your band above your head. And from here, pull the resistance. Oh, 
I'm actually going to lengthen that a bit more. Okay, and from here, pull, feel that resistance in the band, and lower it down to your mid back. Remember to tuck in your tailbone. You should feel as if there is tension and resistance between both hands. And your scapula should be retracting. And then at no point don't release your band when you are bringing it forward in front of you. So commonly for some people they might feel like it's very easy. It's like, oh, there needs to be resistance between both hands. So you should always feel like there's tension, but you also don't push yourself too much. It's just enough strength that you can handle. So yes, slightly bend your elbows, but also lengthen them so that you can feel the strengthening as you lower to your mid back. Let's try this for three more rounds. One. Two. Exhale. Three. Okay, and you can also go for a few more times so that you can feel, a, break into a little bit of a sweat if you feel like it. You should really feel like your chest is opening and also you're activating your shoulders as well as your serratus anterior. A lot of the times when our posture is slouched or feeling a lot of pain in our neck from looking down at our phones, we are actually not activating our serratus anterior. So it's good to activate and strengthen through this exercise. So let's also do the sides of our body. So from here, turn to the left. Again, feeling the resistance in the band between your hands and to the right. Okay, I'm also going to try to keep my core engaged because it will feel tempting to slide to the side like this. I want to keep it engaged. Three more rounds. And to the right. Okay, and release. From here, it should feel a lot more open. So having said that, I'm going to turn around and we're going to try out reverse prayer. So placing your hands behind your back, palms facing outwards. Slowly bring your arm hands up to your mid back and find yourself connecting your hands together. And it is all right if your hands can't completely touch in prayer as naturally you'll feel a bit tight or achy. It's good to just start. And from here, retract your shoulder blades. Again, tuck in your tailbone so that your back is not arching. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. And slowly, gently, gently release your hands. And bring them together as you give yourself a hug. Great. All right, let's go into tabletop position. Hands parallel. Fingers spread apart for large surface area. Shoulders stacked above your wrists and knees at width hip width distance. 
And from here, you're going to untuck your toes, flat back. We're going to enter cat and cow pose, Vitilasana and Marjariasana. So from here, inhale as we arch our back into cow pose, gazing forwards, and make sure that your shoulders are protracted and that your neck is not sinking into your shoulders. Try your best. And exhale, round the back into cat pose, gazing point being the belly button, crown of your head pointing to the mat. Inhale, into cow pose, exhale, round spine, cat pose, inhale, into cow pose, and exhale, into cat pose. They say this is a cat pose because cats will often round their spines when they're feeling threatened or scared. Inhale and release. And from here, untuck your toes and we're going to enter Downward Facing Dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Okay, from here, feel the lengthening of your spine as your tailbone pulls towards the ceiling. And if you feel tight in your hamstrings or finding it hard to pull your heels to the mat, paddle your feet as needed, easing into the stretch, or bend your knees while lengthening the spine. Gazing point being your belly button. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. And from here, enter Falankanasana plank. Protract your shoulders, stacking your shoulders above your wrists. Engage your glutes, your core, tucking your tailbone. And lower your knee, chest, chin in Ashtanga Namaskar. Pulling your elbows towards your, the side of your chest, slide forward into Bunjangasana, Baby Cobra. Placing your hands next to the side of your chest. And from here, we will enter Sphinx Pose, placing your forearms onto the mat, lifting up. Feeling your thighs internally rotating, glutes engaged. And from here, place your hands next to your chest and push up into Upward Facing Dog, shining your chest and collarbones forward. And bring a small smile to your face as it helps when you smile during a stretch. Well, it certainly helps me. And from here, lower back down to the mat, we're going to enter Sutta Eka Bhuja Swastikasana. Bit of a mouthful, isn't it? This one is a known as auspicious one-armed reclined pose. So I'll show you from here, place your left hand out to the side, facing to your right, resting your head on your mat, and from here, use your right hand to rotate your body to the left. And yes, you will be leaning onto your shoulder. You can bend your right knee while your left leg is extended. And if this is already too much for you, you can remain here in this stretch. And bring your hand behind your back. Find your hand. Ooh, where's my hand? I'm going to look for it. There it is. And interlace your fingers when it's connected. And stay here for a good 30 seconds so that you can ease into the stretch. 
and rest your neck and your head so there should not be any tension in your neck. This is a great way to open up your chest. And again, if you're too uncomfortable at any point, rest your hand onto the mat in front of you. And we'll repeat this stretch on the other side as well. Hands to the side. Using your left hand to rotate your body back, bend your left knee, extend your right leg, bring your hand back if you can. Interlace your hands and enjoy that stretch in your shoulder, in your chest, resting your head and your neck, no tension in the neck. And again, we'll do this for 30 seconds. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. And gently release. Returning back to your belly, to the mat. And from here, raise your arms. Well, push away from the mat into upward facing dog. So remember to Retract your shoulder blades, chest and collarbones shining forward. And from here, enter tabletop position again. And we're going to do two more rounds of cat and cow pose. Untap your toes in this position as well. Enter cow pose and cat pose. Cow pose and cat pose. And we'll enter Balasana, child's pose. Stretch it out. Send your spine, resting your forehead onto the mat. And from here, reach to the right side of your mat. From here, reach to the left side of your mat. And we'll enter one more pose, one more stretch before we end today. We'll enter Camel Ustrasana. So on your knees, part it at hips width distance apart. Ustrasana is camel pose. So in this we would like to engage our quads, tucking your tailbone, and we're going to lean back and we're going to reach for our heels. So we will re require to activate our core so that we can hold our body without falling backwards. Touching our knees and leaning back, facing back of the room. And you feel like this part of your body is also pulling you forward to stabilize. And raise back up. If at any point you feel that it's too strenuous on your lower back, the regressed version would be to lower onto your, sit onto your heels, place your hands back and raise up like this. Please make sure that your Knees are hip width apart. And make sure that you're not arched and neither are you slouched. So we'll repeat that one more time, a full Ustrasana camel pose. Gently lean back, activating your quads, your core, tucking your tailbone, roll your shoulders back and lean back, hands to your heels and face backwards to the room. Don't forget to breathe. <laughs> and gently pull to the back. And this is great for your chest opening stretches for today. And from here, we'll seal it off with 
deep breaths. So sitting in easy seated position, ground your sit bones into your mat, resting your hands onto your knees, roll your shoulders back, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, last round, inhale through the nose, Exhale through the mouth. Bring your hands together to heart center and take a moment and feel the release in your shoulders and your chest from these stretches. Thank you for joining me today and hope you enjoy these stretches at home in the comforts of working at home or resting at home. Thank you.